What is my what is our favorite Gundam show? What's your favorite Gundam show? Well, I am a newbie to the whole Gundam world, mm -hmm. and I am exploring it for the first time. There we go. So I'm seeing. Uh, we we just watched uh, the first five episodes of uh, Mobile Suit Gundam, mm -hmm. and. I can't wait to see the next ones. <laughs> and I understand it's a huge franchise. So it's a whole use, it sounds like, that I can explore. So I'm not sure what mine will be, but this is the one I'm cutting my teeth on. There we go. So I'm curious what uh, what some of our folks have uh, found to be their favorite. Yeah. Kind of why that is. and. Is it is it is it your favorite because it was your first exposure, or mm -hmm. is it your favorite because of a particular characteristic, say the plot, the characters, the the Gundam itself, the design, the animation? Which uh, yeah. as as we were uh, checking out some of the other series previews, mm -hmm. it's got a whole history of development that's that's changed over time as yeah. animation has come along, and. Uh, I'm kind of curious what what all you guys find yeah. uh, to be your favorites. <laughs> yeah, I did a panel on Gundam um, at Katsukon, and I told people that Gundam Wing, one of the fan favorites, is not a, a, a show I'd recommend to newbies. And folks were shocked because so many people became <gasps> Gundam through that uh, on Toonami. I said, oh, it's a weird series. You know, I love it. It's a great show. But I, I, I wonder how many people, like you were saying before, how many people love it because it was their first Gundam series. Hmm. Um, and it just you know kind of happened to be there as opposed to for how many of it, it really is a, an effective first episode or first show. Hmm. Uh, E2, E2. Hard to say. Gundam Seed is your favorite. Nice. Gundam Seed. I, that that hmm. is... Um, that is an excellent choice, Wolf Medic. I'm, I'm to the point where somebody, and I don't know their preferences, and they say, what Gundam should I start with? Seed is one of the ones I, I point to. because It's modern. It looks um, fresh. It looks like the kinds of shows folks are used to, and it tells a nice big war story. And it borrows some from original Gundam initially. So you have that familiarity if you, if you move on from there. And that goes on like that. And then we have a sticker, number 24. Woohoo! That's fine. Number 24. And then, um, William Gaunt's your favorite is Gonna Build Fighters? That's awesome. That is a really fun show. That is That would certainly be in my kind of top, um, just sort of fan favorite kind of Gundam shows. Just, just, just such a fun show. Um, where does that wrap around? Could you tell me where your sticker goes? That would be nice. Um, does it go there? Ooh, I think it goes there. Yeah. Little bob bite on the end. This is this is definitely a, a skill that develops patience. Mm -hmm. And and the ability to pay attention to small details is, yeah. is quite an asset, not just in this area, <laughs> but in a lot of areas of life. Yep. And when you're done, you have something that you made. I did that. I did that. Exactly. Um, there's a lot to be said for having something that came uh, directly out of your own labor, and then you can play around with. You can, you know, plan to do some some fun playing around with this model kit. You know, I have a couple of model kits that I I like, and I want to keep pristine. And this is one where oh, I can play around a little bit with it. <laughs> Seed was your first, but X is still an all-time favorite. Yes, X is a really fun one. Sadly, X um, was not very popular when it came out, so it was uh, canceled early. But it was a fun little action adventure series. I listened to a soundtrack a lot. Hmm. Amazing soundtrack. Ooh. Gorgeous. A good soundtrack can make all the difference. No kidding. I'd play some, but we get booted off the air. Yeah, that's one of the... One of the areas that uh, is too bad. We, we can't yeah. play the music for a yeah. lot of things. So. Yeah, we, we love to be playing anime music here, but folks have kind of uh, clamped down on that in the streaming world. What exactly, Warfanatic, um, uh, Seed was very popular with 
folks who weren't hugely familiar with with Gundam, like they may have heard about it, but they certainly were not hardcore fans. But hardcore fans, at least in America, didn't like see it. And in Japan, I get the feeling that there was there are plenty of hardcore Gundam fans who are more than pleased with Seed. But for some reason in America, I got this this weird, strong negative reaction. Hmm. I wonder why why I got that reception. Well, part of the problem was that it started off by um, uh, copying a few um, plot elements from original Gundam. Hmm. Um, so the main character is a 15-year-old boy who stumbles onto a giant robot, uh, onto a Gundam, and then he ends up on a, a big capital ship that is turning flying through space. Um, so a lot of those, those basic things are there, but they veer off from that pretty quickly, and that was pretty clearly their attempt to say, okay, we're going to, um, um, you know, include these elements, but it's not like they were trying to directly um, say, you know, we're only going to do these, these plot elements. But I, I think that um, annoyed people. People thought it was just a ripoff. Hmm. Um, and then they just kind of ignored it, sadly. Okay, come on. Get in there. Get in there. For me, I, I usually have to watch at least half a season before mm. I can draw a definite conclusion on anything. Yeah. That's wise. Uh, and, and sometimes shows will take a very different twist <laughs> and almost even change genre depending yeah. upon uh, where where the authors take it. And it, yeah. it, it it's kind of fun to to see a series that I think is going nowhere, finally pick up pace and, okay, I'm getting into it now. Or It's funny about anime. Often a series with a really lackluster first three episodes will really pick up steam in the last um, last half and become a really interesting <laughs> I episode. want more! Yeah. <laughs> um, when a show that starts really strong often will have a, a kind of a lackluster ending. Hmm. Funny how sometimes that works. Okay, so this goes on... Uh, like that, okay, and then we clip it into this. Uh, let's see here. So that is that way. As I size up my pieces. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, there we go. All right, I've got part of an arm. Oh, I need another piece. <laughs> Good. D twenty six. And then do we get ah D twenty nine? So we're getting close on the. You can. Yep, there's the test. Now, this is an example of a. It uh, will you will be able to open and close the the hand, but the, the fingers don't move. That's what the higher grade models will be able to do. Frankly, I'm just amazed you can actually open and close the hands in this. <laughs> um. And the soap opera stuff in the beginning of Gundam Seed. That's true. There was a lot of soap opera elements, if you will, of, uh, of original Seed. Mm. Um, and granted, I mean, I was no big fan of the character of Flay Alster. I think she was kind of a uh, not the most fun and interesting character. I know where they were going with her, but it was just kind of like... <sighs> a 13? Okay, so there's the thing. Where's the rest of the hand? There's the rest of the hand. There's the 29. And then there's the... Huh, interesting. Have, the part of the hand, but have all the Gundam been translated into English dub uh, versions? Or? Um, no. And some of them probably never will be. Um, really? So what? What, uh, what happened was um, Bandai, the company that owns Gundam, uh, had a an American licensing you know company, licensing arm, and they were trying to sell Gundam in America, but they had a tough time doing so. Hmm. Uh, well, moving moving backwards. Um, throughout the 70s and 80s, Bandai tried selling Gundam in America, but they could never really find the right way to do it. Uh, it just never really came together. Nobody was interested. Um, and so eventually they... Um, there we go. Um, eventually they ended up showing Gundam on Toonami, by showing Gundam Wing back in the day. And, oh no, you can't even move the thing. Oh, that's a shame. Ha 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 ha, got it snapped together. Nice. Yeah, there we go. Um, so Gundam Wing came out in America. And do we not put that on yet? Oh, we could. Um, 
and it was a huge success in America. Hmm. So um, Bondi thought, great, this is it. This is our entry to, to America. And they decided they would um, just start releasing all the Gundam series in America. So they'd all get wow. dubbed and released. And uh, that didn't go over so well. Oh. Because the next Gundam they tried to bring over here was original Mobile Suit Gundam on Toonami. And most 12-year-olds watching Toonami just were not ready for... 1979 animation oh that's that yeah the difference in what they're used to seeing and hey why is this uh, old technology type mm, yeah type? exactly um so mobile suit gundam just did not do well on cartoon network hmm. so um uh bondi released a few more uh, uh some just on dvd and then bondi america was shut down by the bondi uh corporate entity so wow. uh, they were and they were in the middle of working on various releases of gundam um, so those never saw the light of day, but recently, just about, I believe last year, Right Stuff, hmm. the, the anime company over here, they got the rights to Gundam from, uh, from Bondi. So they're now releasing all the rest of the Gundam series. They, they now say they, they're committed to releasing all of them. They probably will not dub all of them though. So is there a Bondi USA anymore? Not is anymore. It, it's completely no, gone. It, it's gone. And so yeah, they have standard. to channel it through other yeah. folks. So mm -hmm. Right Rights Stuff? So White Stuff has the Gundam license, and they're going to be releasing everything. So <laughs> it, it's kind of tricky the whole who owns what and how they right. release through where. Yeah. I guess with every international transaction, there are several different people who are involved, mm -hmm. and uh, success or failure can get spread to a point where you need somebody to act as an intermediary. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, it gets complicated. Yeah. Um, um, I'm not talking about Stargazer because Stargazer was kind of an interesting side project. So Stargazer um, back in the mm. '90s, Bandai tried to make a live-action Gundam series or work, and mm. they ended up making a movie in Canada, a uh, live-action uh, Gundam movie in Canada using Canadian actors and CGI. Um, many Gundam fans do not speak of this. Um, <laughs> it was it was that much of a of, of a. Of a failed yeah, <laughs> effort. It was a debacle. I've, I've, I've seen it. It is... Um, um, the writers obviously knew enough about Gundam to put in certain common Gundam story tropes. Hmm. So certain things you see a lot of in Gundam do show up in... in I'm sorry. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, you're, I'm sorry. You said Stargazer. I'm Stargazer. thinking um, something different. I'm thinking of... Uh, no, Stargazer was a Gundam Seed thing. Um, I'm thinking of... Uh, what's the name of it? I got to look it up now. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So thanks, guys. I'm thinking the wrong. Yeah. Um, G Savior. G Savior is what I'm thinking hmm. of. Um, so G Savior, yeah. G G Savior is a uh, it was a live action Gundam uh, work, and um, yeah, it, 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 the effects were not up to snuff. The acting was they were trying their best, but they just, you know, they didn't have what they needed to, to do what they needed to do. Uh, it, it was a debacle. It was a complete debacle. And Gundam just doesn't really usually fit very well into a 90-minute format. Hmm. Um, it's a big war epics. It's you know, a sprawling story. So that was a bit of a problem. Um, you know, Stargazer was completely different. Stargazer was a uh, an OVA set in the Gundam Seed universe, the Gundam Seed timeline. Hmm. Um, which was released in three episodes directly to the internet. Hmm. So it was a, an original net animation, if you will. And um, that confused a lot of people. Um, it was a kind of a weird approach. It had its own... Um, it, it, well, as it turned out... Um, one second. Basically, Bondi was starting to experiment with releasing things on the internet. And this was, hmm. this would have been mid 2000s. So there wasn't a lot of bandwidth and, but folks knew that internet distribution was gonna be a big thing someday. Yeah. So, start, so for Stargazer, they said, let's, let's make an original work just for the internet and release it and see what ha happens. Just hmm. see what the, what the response is. So Stargazer was, is basically three more or less um, distinct episodes all woven together by certain plot threads. They're basically three different stories um, set in the Gundam Seed, Seed universe uh, with a couple of characters sort of um, interspersed uh, within them. So the problem is Stargazer came out and folks thought they were getting a three episode OVA story, hmm. but instead oh. they were getting these, these little short stories. Yeah. Shorts. Yeah. So folks were really confused by that. So it wasn't so much a webisode as it was a, a web release 
standalone yeah. story. It, it, it was it was sort of like these um these these movies that consist of short films where you do like mm. a short film and oh a short yeah yeah so it's really an anthology, um uh, with with again some interconnected uh, plot threads. So people just got really confused by that, and it kind of um, put a sour note on the Seed universe for a while. That's too bad um, to see an effort fail. Exactly, um, and then the other problem was that the um, Gundam Seed was written by written and directed by a husband and wife team, hmm. and the wife got seriously ill oh. um, around the time of Star Wars. Oh, that's too bad. And she hit the hospital, so they were working on plans for a Gundam Seed movie, but everything scre- screeched to a halt. And um, that is still t- that, that 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 movie has still technically never been taken off the books. But it, it's never, you know, there's still, hope. Yeah, there's still <laughs> hope. Um, so folks are kind of waiting for her to get better for anything more to happen. Hmm. Well, we've been going for uh over an hour now, so I think this is a good time to to pause in our Gundam building. We're both see how far we are, so you're we're much farther than I am. That's okay, that's all right. Like I'm, said, you have I'm a, getting a, my pieces and parts a together, rather more complicated thing. Oh, good, so you're, 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 your torso is almost complete. Wow, lots of little bits and bobs, yeah. Lots of yeah. little little pieces, parts. Cool, cool. Sweet. All right. Well, like I said, we will uh, continue this stream some other time. We're going to be doing a couple of these, building these model kits. We'll talk more about Gundam as we uh, we continue on. But uh, thank you all for watching. Appreciate it. Take care, guys. Thanks for joining. <laughs>